Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again for another one of our online art skills videos. First of all, some shout outs. Uh, this week, I'd like to say a big hello to Sai and Becky and Simon, uh, Emma and Anna, everybody at Revolution. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, produce these videos and uh, for looking out for me. I hope you're all well. So the aims of today um, are to continue with the drawings we started last time and to use those to practice our colouring technique. So what we'll need today, we'll need some drawing equipment, we'll need our pencil and our rubber, our sharpener, uh, ideally a nice set of uh, colour pencils, um, any colour pencils really will do, again how much you spend will reflect on the quality of the finish. Uh, also need some felt tip pens, nothing expensive really, I'm trying not to use too much expensive equipment but he's got some sort of standard colours here, some Sharpies, uh, some barrel colours and uh, finally some uh, black fine tips or, or outliner pens, uh, ideally not Sharpies for this, Sharpies tend to bleed, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, I've got a nice a permanent waterproof pen here and it's a fine liner. What I will do today though is I will also do some outlining with a standard pen, Biro, and um, hopefully uh, we'll get some decent results with that as well. So, you know, again, it just shows you you don't necessarily need super equipment to be able to do this stuff. And the skills, so the skills we'll be learning today, how to use different media, uh, so how to combine using uh, colour pencils, colour pens, fine liners uh, to create uh, some nice colour artwork. Uh, first of all let's uh, start off by going back to last week's task and we were doing some nice scaling and planning of our drawings and one thing that you might have noticed that I missed was at the time I didn't actually notice it with myself but I didn't actually finish off Mickey, I didn't draw in his body. Uh, this wasn't intentional, but this gives me an opportunity to just do a quick recap and just remind you uh, of that technique of scaling. Now, don't forget that the only way to become an expert, or at least to improve, is to continually practice. So I think it's a good idea that I, uh, that I show you this again. So we started off by looking at the image, we were scaling it, trying to find any patterns that we could find. Uh, sort of like the levels of the ears, where the eyes are, the nose. And we're just trying to find the overall scale of the head there. It's quite big. And then we've got like a slightly, slightly smaller section for the body here. Got to leave a gap here between the shorts and the, um, the shoe and make sure we've got some room for the legs here. Okay, so we've got a rough idea there of how Mickey's scaled. And what we started off with was some directional lines, some skeletal lines, because we need this swing forward. He's uh, very enthusiastically swinging forward. His arm comes around like this. We've just got some guidelines going in there then. And from there, there's his, his pelvis, his hips. And we've got, let's have a look at that leg. Well, it kind of, his ankle appears to be just above his mouth here. His leg kind of swings out like that and this ankle is about below the center of the nose here so again we'll have this a slight diagonal to the left okay let's have a look at that scale in a minute so that's about right maybe those legs a bit shorter we've got that gap and then the uh, big shoes at the end this shoe we could give them a give them a guideline here this shoe kicks out like that doesn't it and this shoe on that direction like that. Okay, so once again what we'll do is we'll start to now find the drawing using those guidelines. So that's that arm swinging down and we can see the inner side of that arm. We've got just a, a little bit of his tummy showing before we've got the curve of his shorts. And I mean, you can just just see the side of him. It's a little bit out of scale in comparison to the drawing. I might just have to adjust that slightly. So let's, uh, let's bring that curve round. 
and I'll get rid of that original just so it doesn't distract me. Okay. I'm using that skeleton just to find, to draw either side of to, to create the thickness. Um, look at the way that the shorts there, that's an indicator isn't it, where that leg comes out there, that's just to make sure you get it in the right place. Okay, this negative space, let's use this because it's important, negative space, and just copying what we see. Okay, and clearly there would be, if they're not, a need to correct this now. I'm sure that that's not exactly right. I mean, let's for a start, let's look at the edge of that shoe. Kind of meets just at the edge of the ear. Also, maybe that is about the correct, correct size. Let's just have a look at this negative space in between here. So we've got this curve of the shoe round the top of the shoe. His leg swings up, his like shorts jutting out before they meet his hand in his pocket there. And that looks nice, but that looks about right. Of course, when I'm happy, I'm going to rub out some of these uh, these lines. I've tried not to press on too hard. Uh, once I've got what I want in place, and I think I'm right, then we can look at rubbing, as I said last time, carefully away, not, not like trying to uh, completely remove the drawing. Okay, so colouring in then. Let's uh, just, for this purpose of this video, we will just look at Mickey and Minnie. Um, mainly because my last video ran over to 53 minutes and I think it'd probably be better if we tried to keep this a little bit shorter. So uh, if you just think in terms of applying the principles of what I'm showing you here to whichever drawing, uh, be it one of the ones you did last week or your own characters, colouring in them. We're going to start off by cleaning this page up. So we've got our drawings, we're relatively happy with where they're at and we're ready to colour. But what we don't want is all of these marks and sketchy marks and the, the darkness of the pencil will also contaminate our colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm rubbing back. If you remember, the last thing you did with these drawings, once you were happy with everything, was to bold outline with the pencil. So it will have left scars, marks on the page, so that even when you rub out, Although it may be difficult with the camera there to see, you do have the impression of the character ready to go. Uh, the darkness of the pencil has gone so it won't contaminate, you know, particularly lighter colours like yellow, which we're going to be using today. Okay, so I'm not furiously rubbing out to try and destroy my drawing so I can't see it. I'm just sort of medium pressure, I guess I would say, on this rubber. rubbings all that waste we don't want anything to be picked up so I still have my image to work off but it's now nice and clean and I'm ready to go with coloring okay so the colors I'm gonna need for this character I'll need some red we're gonna leave the white for the spots we need the white of the page and on the gloves as well there and then we need some uh, some black problem the trickiest color here is going to be the flesh tone for you to to try and get hold of uh, some colouring sets you may find that there's a nice uh, skin tone in there uh, or varied skin tones and um, if you do struggle with pens it might be that it's easier to find a coloured pencil even that might produce um, a, at least a colour that's close to what you're looking at. It's going to be tricky to get hold of that colour though, that specific colour I think. Um, we're going to go from colouring, we're going to go from light to dark lightest colours first so they're not contaminated and dirtied by the darker colours later. If I was to fill in all these black areas and then start to introduce the flesh tone it would probably bleed into uh, the colour and dirty the colour. Now I happen to have, I'm going to cheat here a little bit to start off with, I do have a nice pen here that I'm going to use that's a flesh tone which is quite similar and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline 
around the outside of this colour, the shape of this colour. So I'm going to outline all around where I'm going to be filling in with this colour. And that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go around the eyes and that just gives me like a protective border so I don't then start filling in and go into the white of the eyes, for example. Okay, I've got a nose here, so I've got, I do, no point in me wasting the ink filling that nose area in. And it looks like the rest of it is just filled now. Well, let's just go around the bottom of the mouth so that that's identified. And now what I can do is, rather than going over and over and over and producing a very dark colour, what I'm going to do is just gently work like a brush into the areas that haven't been touched yet. Okay. Now when that's finished, you'll notice that where the pen has go, gone over one place twice, it's a little bit darker. I can use that to my advantage. I can start going over some areas. You can do this with most felt tips. Sometimes it's better to wait till it's completely dry so it doesn't damage the paper. But if I use this to my advantage, I'm just shading to the left hand side of the shape. And it's just giving me a little bit of a sort of three dimension there. It looks a little bit more solid. Like there's some light on her face. I'll do a bit of shadow under the, uh, under the bow there. Okay. So let's look carefully about where these spots are then. So I'm going to draw a little, perhaps a little bit larger because then I can work into them. Like so with the red pen that I'm going to use to fill. Here's another one. I'm going to position these roughly where I can see them. Okay, so I might want to go back at this point and say to myself, well, do, are all these nice enough? Do I need to tidy some of these up so they look more circular? What I'd like to do next then is, with the exception of where a polka dot meets the edge, I'm going to go around, just like I did with the flesh tone, I'm going to find the shape that's going to be coloured red, and I'm going to go around the outside. You see, I'm avoiding where the, um, the polka dots are. Okay. That gives me a nice uh, border to work from so I don't go over that and then I can start colouring. I'm going to colour in, like I said before, be like a brush with your felt tip. So don't press on too hard and keep overworking the same area. Keep the pen moving and work it gently. And it might be that you find there are areas that aren't coloured deep enough or that you know, it might be a bit patchy and you can go back and work into those again gently like a brush so that you're not overworking the area. So I'm working a lot quicker and with less care than you'll be able to do. That's because I'm conscious of the length of this video whereas you can pause this at any point and work at your own speed. There's no pressure for you at all. Okay, and um, let's do the same thing with the dress then. So I'm going to outline around anywhere there's the outside of this red shape, this dress. And once I've got my border, I'm just going to be very careful about not overworking the colour, only working into the lines that I've drawn the outside of the shape and for the, the dots and that means that I won't work over and into the lovely clean white areas that I want to keep. Now we've got the shoes are also red so I'm going to do the same thing as I'm going to outline around the area that I want to colour to give me a protective border. Before I start filling in the shape, and that gives me the opportunity then to know exactly where I'm coloring in. Don't have to go over 
not going to overwork it. Now this could be the point where you do look back now and see is there anything that's patchy? Do I need to perhaps just build up some colour? Maybe I need to wait for it to dry first, then work over it so I don't damage the page. And be patient with yourself, you know, be patient with the drawing and that will pay off. Let's get rid of these patchy areas so the colour is nice and flat. I'm going to let you spend more time on that than I will. Okay, we've got to finish off, we've got a lot of black areas to fill in and we've got a black outline to do. So straight away, first of all, I'm going to use a, uh, a fine liner pen, a black fine liner, just to carefully Gone off a little bit there, let's get that right. Just doing the same thing again, I'm just outlining any areas, any black shapes that are going to be filled in. Okay, so for example there, I don't need to use a fancy pen. I could use this, just this simple black biro to do the same thing. Very carefully, take my time. Okay, if you're drawing any curves like that and it's tricky, you can always get a practice piece of paper first and just train your hand, just get used to the shape you're going to draw before you go on to your drawing. So for the moment anyway, I'm just kind of interested in the black shapes that I need to fill. So I've outlined those in, and now I'm going to take a wider pen, black felt tip. With um, felt tip pens, and particularly with Sharpies, uh, it's really important, I think, to just check them out first, just to make sure, move that out of the way, just make sure that they, they're working okay. And just have a practice with them as well. If you hold them in one place too long, they bleed out. If you press on too hard as well, the line can bleed away and um, be quite difficult to control. So you need to kind of use these, again, quite brush-like and be careful with them. But always test out and get used to your equipment before you go on to the drawing. That way you'll avoid uh, upsetting yourself if you get it wrong. Okay, so we're gonna do some colouring in them. I'm gonna fill these in. Working very carefully to the line. And we're nearly there. So, to finish off our mini mouse, I do need to now just insert the final outline. Uh, what might be good practice, a good idea for you, is perhaps to start off by using your biro or your fine pen, just to find the lines first and make sure, let's correct that one bit, that was wrong, make sure that you're happy before we commit to a line. Now with your final outline then, there's a couple of things we can do here. First of all, we can go back to our felt tip pen and we can very carefully So if you're confident, and once you are confident, you've got some experience, you're able to go straight in here with this outlining pen. 
with how I'm not staying in one place and letting that bleed out and moving the pen all the time, not pressing on too hard. I can go back over these lines that I've done now. That will help me finish them off. If you don't have an outline your pen like this, perhaps you're only working with a biro, what you can do is to make sure that your outline doesn't lose control and go sort of wavering and out thick and thin is you can draw out the outside of the outline first and then you've got complete control with the biro haven't you just takes a little bit longer to fill in but then you know you you outline is nice and balanced and it's the same thickness all the way around I've just gone out of the line a little bit <laughs> you get the idea okay and then I'm just go back to my felt tip for finishing off I have made a mistake here I can see I, I've not left the gap for the underskirt the white section which just runs underneath the dress here so be careful there This line sort of stops here and then this shoe tucks forward and is in front. Okay, and um, what have I forgotten to do? Should have done this first so that the red and the black don't bleed in together. Okay, and then to finish it off, Either with my biro or my fine liner, I just want to come back to Mr. the liner. Huh? I just want to come back to tidying up now. Then, so sections like around the mouth here. Then, um, these lines are a little bit too thin as well. So, what I'm going to do is just tidy this up. So it flows nicer into that line. Tidy up as well here, and I'm going to give these inner lines just a fraction of a little bit more of a thickness again with, when you're not using the felt tip when you're using a fine line or a biro you've got much more control these eyelashes will probably start off thicker and then go thinner just give them a bit of thickness at the bottom And that's quite a nice version. Slightly different with Mickey then. What you can see here, um, I've started out by doing the, the exact same thing. So from final outlining in pencil, making sure my character was happy, rubbing away to just leave those trace lines so I could begin colouring. I started with my lightest colour and worked up towards the black and um, what's important what's different here is each of the colors you can clearly see that I've only really colored half of the shape and I've left areas uh, even in the black areas I've left parts with the white of the page and the reason for that is we're going to try something a bit different now and that is to um, create more of a sort of 3D colour image. So this is going to be using some of the skills that you've already developed if you followed uh, some of the previous online art skills videos we've, we've released. So using pencil control, graduated pressure to create fades, with the, this time with the coloured pencils, uh, and certainly uh, choosing a light source and creating that idea effect of light. So we're going to try and make Mickey look a little bit more 3D and, and as if he's being affected by light. So to do that, um, you probably already guessed, I'm selecting, I'm deciding that the light source is coming from this direction, from the right, and hitting the character. So what I've chosen to do is I've only coloured to the left of the character with felt pens. Okay, I've done that with the black as well. Even on the arm here, there's the outline for the side of the arm, but I've left the right-hand side of the arm here, just left a little bit of a gap so that we can see uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to shade them using coloured pencils. So for example, on the shoe here I've got some grey and I've just about got a little bit of grey coloured pencil left. What I'm going to do is make sure it's dry first 
so I don't damage the page. I'm going to start off by shading over the felt tip so that I don't get too much of an imbalance of colour. Now as I leave that area and go into the white of the page, this is where you start to ease off and just sort of graduate this um, softly as we finish. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing then with a yellow coloured pencil and I'm going to work from over, first of all pressing on hard, over the pen, the ink, the felt tip and then as I work away from it, that's when I start to gradually ease away. I do the same thing here. Okay. One thing to, to note, I, um, I think I made this point before, uh, the black outline of the character is already on because coloured pencils tend to create this waxy finish. <clears throat> and this will leave a, a coating or a residue on the page that will interrupt your ink, your flow as you draw in your outlines in. So we've done that first and this coloured pencil bit's the last thing we're doing. I'm going to fade that out nicely, like so. Let's do the same thing with a red pencil over the red that's already there. And then as we come away, gradually easing that down. I need to work on that a little bit more and maybe I need a, a, a darker red perhaps because I don't want these bands to be too obvious. I want, just like when we did with the pencils, I want it to be a nice gradual fade from dark to light. Yeah, so I might, I might need to work on that a little bit more. You get a feel for this yourself as you work in the, the pencils and you get a feel for how to control the, the depth of that fade and, and the, the dark to light. The, the, definitely the, the softness of the fade. And let's finish off then with my black pencil which I'm going to work over the black fill here and then gradually out and soften the fade. Do the same thing here. I can use a little bit of a grey uh, just on the right hand side here just to create a bit of shadow on the white glove. Again just graduating, just fading it a little bit. There's the, the little spot there I've left when filling in the, the nose so we've got a bit of a shine. I've done the same thing with the eyes. It just kind of brings your characters to life a little bit more. So to finish off then, again this, this uh, flesh tone is quite tricky. I found one that's relatively similar, it's not ideal. So I'm going to go over the pen. And then work out from that. And just kind of, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, like I've done here, just leaving a little bit of the white of the page so you've got this sort of light, this sort of shine spot. And same here then, out from the ink. and just gradually easing off and maybe leaving a little bit of the white. You might find at the end there that you may have gone over a little bit like I just did there and you should just be able to switch those over where you've lost the outline a little bit. Um, so there we have uh, certainly the need for some more work here. Uh, perhaps a good idea with this black would be to introduce some dark blue here uh, as part of the shine. So I'm going to work my way into black a little bit. That might just soften that up a bit. Have a play around yourself. I'm sure you might be able to, depends what equipment you've got, but maybe it's come up with a, a better solution. So there we have then, um, Mickey, uh, mini even, Mickey Mouse. Uh, mini coloured in a traditional way. Uh, flat colours and we've got our Mickey here done in a more sort of 3D way so you've got a kind of feeling 
of light hitting him. We could actually, sorry, just to finish off there, we could maybe take a, a grey or, or some sort of colour perhaps, a cold colour, and again using our shading technique, draw out a basic shadow here, and then I'll work away from Mickey's outline. And just do that gradual fade. That fade out. And we can create some sort of feeling. Of a shadow underneath him. And again, this just helps to make your characters feel uh, more three-dimensional. Okay, so as usual, have a go. Um, scaling your drawings, making sure you're happy with the scale and proportion before you move on. Outlining them so that when you rub out, you've kept um, only the uh, correct lines and you've got a nice... Uh, imprint on the page there to follow. Colouring, uh, check your pens um, and pencils and, and you know practice with them first on, on another sheet. Make sure you're happy with how you're using them. Start off with lighter colours, work your way up to darker colours and then if you wish to select a light source. Try this theory of uh, colouring to one side of the shapes and leaving white of the page there to work over them in colour pencils and create nice soft fades and three dimensional effects and I hope you enjoy that and I look forward to seeing you next time um, we'll do one more session with the characters I mentioned last time about how tricky it is sometimes um, to do certain things like hands and also uh, how interesting it is to work on uh, one particular character's different expressions and emotions. So we'll look at doing some work on that next time. Until then, take care, stay safe and have fun.